So one of the thing I wanted to do when I got the Nibot Z10 was to go on group rides. There was no way that the IPS i5 would be able to keep up, I had assumed. But now that I have the Z10, I was ready to go make those e-boarders eat my dust. But before that, there's the matter of the wall bracket we must discuss. Now you might be wondering about my obsession of wall mounting the Z10. The thing is, living in a tiny New York City apartment means that you have to take advantage of every single square feet, even vertically. I wall mounted my shoe rack, I wall mounted my bookshelf, I even wall mounted my plant. So the Z10 is definitely going up, and after some trials and error, this is what I came up with. Did I ever tell you that black iron pipe is just about one of my favorite things to build with? Now it's just a matter of getting it mounted on the wall. Were you wondering why I choose to paint the lower 18 inches of my wall, the, the portion most prone to be dirty white? Well, it seems to make perfect sense to me. Anyway, what was it that we were talking about? Oh, the group ride. But before that, a quick update on my progress learning to ride the Z10. So this is officially week one. By the way, if you enjoyed these videos, please hit that like button and subscribe. I'm still new at this and appreciate the love immensely. So as some of you may have suspected, the speed wobble I was having problem with may mostly be caused by rider technique or the lack thereof. However, I also have been thinking about this a bit, which can sometimes lead us down a rabbit hole. So I have the habit of keeping my right steering leg tight to the right face of the IPS i5. Given the general twitchiness of the wheel, it was sort of an insurance policy in case if I were to hit a bump, or for that matter, a street consists of nothing but bumps. Speed wobble wasn't an issue since, well, the IPS i5 wasn't really capable of any speed to speak of. And just to interject, this is the portion of the video where I give you my disclaimer. These are all my wild speculations. I may and very likely have no idea what I'm talking about. Even though the IPS i5 at 14 inches is a relatively small wheel, its thinness allows most of its wheel mass to stay relatively close to its central plane of rotation right down the middle of its skinny tire. By the way, this is why most galaxies are planar rather than spherical. Now the Z10 on the other hand, despite its larger tire size at 19 and a half inches, because of its wider tire, more of its tire mass is actually further away from its central plane of rotation. Which theoretically, if I know physics, and I have to remind you, I don't, makes a wheel less stable, more specifically along its plane of travel, than one with a similar tire mass, but a thinner profile. I believe this is why a road bike have a large and skinny tire. Well, I don't have a road bike, so my trusty Dayhound folder would have to do. I have wider city tires and swap them in favor of stiffer and narrower race tire. And the effect is the bike feeling more on rail and stable at greater speed, but less able to deal with uneven surfaces. But there are also some advantages of having a wider tire. The wider contact patch means more lateral stabilities, which means that if you were to get bounced around a bit, you have a much better chance of recovery with the Z10 than something else. And this is definitely something I had experience with firsthand with this wheel. There have been several occasions when I have lost my balance on this wheel, sometimes because of bad road surfaces, and a few times because of strange braking behaviors. Now that's another subject we'll have to dig into in future episodes. But I'm always amazed at the ability of the Z10 for recovery in this type of condition. After some wobbliness, the wheel tend to even out.
Now this capacity for self-correction is certainly appreciated for an off-road vehicle. It does come in handy pretty often here in New York City. There are some caveats to this. The wheel maintains lateral stability, again due to its wider contact surfaces, and tends to maintain a perpendicular angle to whatever surface you are riding on. And despite what you may think, roads are actually never flat. Even roads in good conditions are humping the middle and slope for drainage to the side. Which means that when you are riding on the shoulder, the wheel is actually slightly tilted away from the center, which also means that when you are riding on a certain row with an undulating surfaces, the Z10 will also tend to react and starts to wobble. Here's a stretch of row at the Riverside Park, where I usually ride that frequently causes wheel wobble whenever I come by going above 20 miles per hour. Now if you were to get down low, like you are making sweet, sweet love to the asphalt, then you'll see that there is a slight waviness to the row in the exact frequency of which I think it's causing the wobble. Now a factor in this would be the stiffness of the wheel itself. I have mine at about 35 psi, which might be a little bit too high, and some adjustment might be sufficiently dampen the wheel reaction to the road surfaces to reduce the amount of wobble. Anyway, as I have said, this is just a theory. If anyone have any other ideas, I love to hear them. That's what the comments section are for, after all. And oh boy, we really got sidetracked. And yes, I tend to overthink things a little bit. So the short of it, after a week, the Z10 is a really crazy and wild ride. Basically like the way it looks. But it is a lot of fun so far. And finally, the group rides. But first, the New York City e-boarding scene is huge. There are almost 700 members on the NYC eBoarding Telegram group and it seems like there are rides every day of the week at all hours. And this is where it all starts. The headquarter, the HQ. I came here for the Flashpoint ride which promises a high speed ride through traffic up 8th Avenue to Central Park and back. Except, well, there's no one here. Well, they were here. And apparently I missed the parties and everyone already went up. So I'll have to catch up to the group at Central Park. And miraculously, I found the group in Central Park charging their boards for the return trip. Well, maybe it wasn't so hard given the sheer quantities of blinking lights going on. Now they do seem to be an agreeable lot, however, again in the pitch darkness of the park at night, it was a bit hard to make friends. But once we start to roll, we're united by our electrically powered need for speed. I do have to confess that I check out the spec on the boosted board side just to see what my competitions might look like. 25 miles per hour top speed, I can take that. Problem is, I didn't know about the custom boards. These Frankenstein boards are crazy fast and makes even the Z10 look like a tricycle by comparison. Unfortunately, I got no footages of these elusive speed demons since they turbo off soon after we departed and I was nowhere fast enough to keep up. Oh well, maybe next time. The ride was awesome, having clocked 600 miles on the IPS i5, I've certainly rode quite a bit, but it was something altogether different to ride in a group. Through what had to be one of, if not the most lively cities in the world. Before you know it, we're back in the East Village. But alas, I wasn't able to stay and check out everyone's boards since it's time to pick up Kelly. But I was completely amped up even after the ride. We'll certainly have to do this again soon. Anyway, I just realized that I end up making some crazy speculations about the wheel mechanics and I actually didn't talk all that much about my experience learning to ride the Z10. Well, I promise that I'll make up for it next week. 
And you'll get to see the completed Z10 wall mount. Aren't you excited? All right, if you made it this far, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm still blown away that people actually enjoy watching my videos. I'm still learning, so please pardon the many, many, many mistakes I'm sure I'm making. And as always, please like the video and subscribe. I promise the next one will be even better.